Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let your kingdom come, Lord. Let your will be done. One more time, Lord, that's for something special. For your very presence. Let us draw near to you, Lord, in spirit. And in truth. Right now, Lord, let us be aware of all the voices we've been listening to. Everything we've been giving attention to that's weakened us and drawn us away from your presence. Let us be about that which is needful, Lord. that seeks to set you free, your, death, your ears become dull because you don't believe that that's the word of God. Or right, listen to me today. I want you to know something that discipline is temporary because God knows one day you're going to be mature and you're going to be at a place where you can handle it and you can use it. Amen? Or right, listen to me. Look what it says in St. John 14, and he says, but the helper, and I want you to understand something, that reason why we're speaking about the Holy Spirit, because we're in the administration of the Holy Spirit. Jesus left us, and we're the body of Christ. We're under the headship of Christ. But in order to operate, we need help. Amen. I mean, in order to be alive, in order to be a witness, in order to do the things that Christ has said we should be able to do, to continue to be his body in the earth, doing the things that he did before, even in a greater way. Now listen to me. That's where the rubber meets the road. Amen. I'm still believing and still receiving more than riches and gold to operate in the gifts of spirit and time and necessity. Or listen to me today. The helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. I want to share something with you. If most of you had the Holy Spirit out on your phone, You wouldn't have time to be Googling and talking to somebody else. Did you know if you listen to the Holy Spirit, you'll stay in safe zone? Amen. You know what I call it? I stay in my lane. Amen. 
Do you know understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about, did you know my lane and stand with the Holy Spirit keeps me healed? Do you know it keeps me mentally stable? Do you know I sleep with sweetness? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about I sleep so good that I wake up in the middle of the night and say, good, praise be to God for sweet sleep. I'm talking about, I'm talking about nobody, man, I ain't mad, no, I, even if I had an enemy, God said it's going to be my friend. Amen. I, I mean, you got to start seeing things, nothing changes God's opinion. Nor his reputation. But you know how that happens when you find favor with God. See, everybody won't be finding favor with everybody else, all relationships you want to be close to. You know what the Bible says? I'm going to say what the Bible says. That your enemies will be those of your own household. Amen. <laughs> he said, I didn't come to bring peace for a sword. Amen. He said, my mother, father, sister, brother, those do the will of God. Amen. He said, the fool I got, huh, he said, you ain't ate all day. He said, I done had some food and you don't know nothing of. Amen. Are you listening to me today? But we got a helper. And I want to share something with you. I'm meditating on this and I'm sending it to you so that each week when you leave, you should be understanding. Are you seeking help? Or you want to stay the same? See, when I asked you tonight, how do you see yourself? Some of y'all, you, you went blank. Some of you went down. Some of you got quiet. Because see, you can go to church all your life and sit in the crowd and Knowing you ain't feeling so good with God, in your opinion with God. But let me share something with you. This, I want you to know something. How you feel and what you think about yourself don't change the way God thinks about you. Amen. But you can't balance it out. You, you can't get up to where God thinks about it. See, we think more highly of ourselves than we all. Sometimes we need to fear God. Amen. You ain't with me yet. Fear him enough to obey him. And feel good about obedience. See, when anything bothers me, I have to, and the Holy Spirit builds to I let it go. See, some things can become a habit that you don't even want to be. Amen. Are you listening to me? <clears throat> I went to exercise today, and I've done something today that I hadn't been doing two years. I'm healed. How I got healed? Because I let something go that I needed to let go. But some of y'all can't let go of anything because you think that it, you're, you're scared to talk against your habit. You're scared to kill it. Amen. It's been with me all these years, you know. Just like the old guy said today. Well, we all hope to make it. I said, sir, I'm not hoping I'm going to make it. See, some of y'all would agree with that. Would have laughed at it. But I'm planning on making it. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't no hoping to make it. I'm, he said, you're a young man. But I'm still planning to go to heaven. Amen. I'm still planning on another home. Amen. And he to walk out, out, out of his yard. He said, yeah, you know, I'm trying to fix things up because... And he looked at me very quiet and whispered like somebody was listening. Because uh, in case something happened to me, I don't want to hurt, have it all to do. Good man. When, has your husband ever said that to you? But you know what I told him? See, I'm a prophet. I said, no, sir. If you go, she can handle it. 
just fine. Amen. You know what I mean? Because I said you're going to leave her with plenty. <laughs> See, you don't understand. You can try to make something neck up sad when it's, you know, you, you, why are you worried about it when you're going to heaven? Amen. You ain't with me yet. Why are you worried if somebody's going to make it or not? If they're going to take care of the roof. Mm -hmm. I got a roof. Amen. I got a house where neither moth nor rust nor thing can break in steel. And I'm not talking from a slave mentality on a plantation and swing low, sweet chariot. I'm talking about what Jesus said. And I'm not talking about waiting to die to get it. Amen. I'm talking about inside of me, he lives. He prepared a place in order to get me in shape yet I needed some help. Amen. Look what he said. He will teach you all things and bring your numbers all that I've said. I want you to look down there. He said, do not let your heart be troubled. Down in verse number uh, 27. 27. That's where most of us are. Whether you admit it or not, you're in trouble. You know, recently God sent me to do something and I went and do it. I didn't want to do it, but I went and do it. I wasn't able to do it. But you know what? A few days later, he spoke to me and says, you don't have to do it no more because I, I sent you to do it and it, you didn't, it wasn't available. But you accepted it. You ever been in some uncomfortable situation where you got to see none of y'all never get it. Y'all got you got too many friends and too many family members to please. You got too much on your plate to keep everybody happy. See, I'm not talking about trouble because you put yourself in trouble. Amen. I'm talking about some time God say you say something, do something, you get trouble. I don't know. You're not a prophet. When, don't you take over the prophet man? I can tell somebody they said they were the, in ministry since they were born. I had to tell them you're not born in ministry. They said they were the pastor, and I had to say you're not no pastor. Why would you want to accept a call and accept the responsibility and? Uh, Attack of the enemy that comes with it. They didn't talk to me no more. Let not your heart be troubled. If you set the call of ministry and the call of God, you need to get beyond the little pit pulpit time and get into the ministry. Amen. Where God can speak to you and it will trouble you. It troubles some of y'all to get up out of the pew to come and pray about something that's going on in our community. And you know what? We need to keep praying. Amen. You know how many churches ain't praying? What happens, happens. Nothing happens without uh, under the guidance of God. Amen. I'm talking to you tonight. Suppose I tell you that you're you can get over the trouble Amen. when it comes to the call of God and the sign of God and the work of God in your life. He said, let not your heart be troubled, but watch this. Nor let it be fearful. Any, anybody reading this in your Bible? Yes. How do you feel about yourself? How do you think God feels about you? Right here, God said, whatever you tell you to do, don't be fearful. Amen. I don't know why God told me to walk off the road and walk up and talk to this man. You know, he had waited on himself. Y'all don't know. Look up at me. Some of y'all know you got perfect health and strength right now. Ain't no. Won't you be the prophet in your life?
your neighborhood. Go talk to somebody about praying for help. You thought you went and talked to them about getting some help, get, get some help in your house, and you gave him help about his house. Don't be fearful. Don't be troubled. But you're too busy and everybody's business got everything going on. And I'm going to tell you something. Your life is in trouble when it comes to what you feel about yourself with God. Sitting on that pew and sitting out here, that, that don't change anything. I see your life. The real life. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy can't reign when there's fear and trouble. Amen. I don't care what you do. That's why you got to get some bubbly. And it still won't rain for long. Y'all ain't with me yet. But watch this. You heard that I said to you, I go away. And I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced. Because I go to the Father. I'd like to ask you each a question. How are you living your life? In fear or faith? Before we go any further, tonight's message is entitled The Holy Spirit Gives Us Boldness. He gives us boldness to be able to do whatever God has asked us to do. I'm trying to get you to understand you got to come to a different level. You know, I come to this church and I, 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 I know the word that God's going to give. And each time is very important and, and, we, and it seems like very few people can stay on course. You need this word in your life. You need to start practicing it and putting it in your life daily. I ask you to listen to the message again from a few weeks ago. There's some keys in it that you need in life. You know, don't need to be a quick forgetter. When you walk out of here and you can't remember, you can't remember, and you don't forget the message that God has given you. The plan. This is a plan for your life. It's a journey, y'all. What about if you have incorporated the plan that God gave you from the pulpit for the last 25 years? You know what I would see in you? Everything that God sees in you. Wow, you ain't getting me. You didn't understand what I just said. God knows what he's invested in you. He knows what he has put in each one of you. He knows your potential. He knows what you are capable of. And he knows that you can. He's put it there. Did you know that you're going to give an account for those things? No, ain't no morning in heaven. I'm talking about M O U R N I N G. But what you think about the opportunity that you have today to do great things for God? Right where you in your life, in your environment, He asked you to go to New York. I've seen God do some mighty things that. Would, in the quick of a moment that was a desire in my heart that I've been praying about all my life that's how quick God can move are you listening to me today but are you living your life in fear or faith money ain't all you need I need guidance. I ask for wisdom. I looked in my window. I went up. I prayed. The window was stuck. I asked for wisdom. God showed me how to unstick it. I got it up. I caught it. I put spackling on it. It's good for the winter. 
but it's got to, going to be replaced. I ask for wisdom. In everything. I ask this question because along this journey I'm finding so few who are still in the faith. You know what people say? Don't judge. But the Bible says if you get the log out of your eye, you'll see clearer. You'll see the speck in your little brother's eye. Just speck. But I'm talking about still in the faith. Not just on Sunday. Not just when trials come. Not just when trouble come to your house. But all the time. Are you in faith? I went to a, a seminar this week. I got invited to it. And I'm sitting at the table with strangers. Of course, I'm always the youngest. And we're sitting and talking, and talking about money and investments and retirement. And when it was my turn to speak, everybody looked at me, I introduced myself, I said, the best investment, give God first. You thought we would have church. I had some folks that looked at me and they stopped eating the little entree and they, they turned a different color, but some people sitting across from me and said, Amen, brother. And then they began to say to me, you know, people ain't going to church no more. See, some of y'all, you have, you have defined the church to be something that is not. Some of you are here, but you don't think you're in church. I'm talking to you tonight. You've been coming here. You haven't figured it out yet. You're waiting for something to change. You're waiting for it to happen. You, it's to happen. But you've got to accept it. You've got to receive it. Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be fearful. You know what? I'm not trying to downsize anything. Be honest. If I was a pastor of 30,000, we'd still be praying. Amen. We'll still be touching and agreeing. Amen. We'll still be learning about the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll still believe that unity is, is in the body of Christ. And in the rest of the night, all they did was listen to me. And then the one gentleman gave me a, a, a information. I didn't wait to leave. I ordered it right then. I went there for that information. See, the glory of God is with you, me, wherever I go. I'm telling you tonight, are you living by faith or whatever happens in fear? Are you listening to me tonight? I want you to see that the Holy Spirit gives us boldness. I mean, really living by faith that comes from the Word of God. I gave you so many scriptures tonight and I just met by the moment I walked in the church that you should know yourself and live by. I want you to comprehend this, that man is the glory of God. Not a saved man. I want you to understand that God sees you as something, someone that should occupy his power, his splendor, his majesty, his, his awesomeness and his mind the way he thinks and sees things. I believe that most are missing out on some of the most basic and powerful moments in everyday living 
Moses will never be given an assignment like many of the biblical characters that we read about. Why, why you read the Bible? Listen to me. I'm not chewing you out. This ain't a chewing out message. Matter of fact, it's going to be more than one message probably here finishing up. I'm taking my time. Can I take my time? Yes. Because you're going to see the significance of this. When, when you leave tonight, you're going to, you're going to, you're, the last three times you come, you had to feel a presence. Amen. Holy Spirit comes when you allow him to be. But we're reading the Bible, and we're reading about these godly characters that was given assignments in life. Today, that was an assignment while I was walking. I went and talked to somebody. I don't know what's going to happen in their life, where they're in or their journey, but I gave them the gospel Amen. in a neighborly way. Get your house in order. Prepare your house. Are oh, you listening to me? I want to give you an example of a biblical character. One of my heroes in faith. Turn to Joshua chapter 1. Did Jesus say, Don't let your heart be troubled yes. or fearful? Yes. Amen. I want you to understand something, that the Holy Spirit come to give us boldness. All this timidity, all this timidity, all this, this fretting that people got. I mean, when you walk outside, and, and some of y'all on the air so much, I'm going to tell you something, man. Don't die like that. You're going to get victory over all hell in your life. Not you with me yet. Look up at me. Let me tell you something. When the people don't have the Holy Spirit, they raise hell. Amen. R-A-I-S-E-E. S-E. But when you got the Holy Spirit, you raise hell. R-A-Z-E. You need to look up what that means. That means you stop it. You put it under your foot. You let it advance no farther. You tear it down. Strongholds. Amen. I mean, some of you guys, you think it's your Irish blood. You, whatever. You ain't Irish. Let me tell you something. I was raised in a hell-raising house, but I, I, ain't had to, I haven't done nothing but raise hell. I ain't act that way. I ain't got to lose my cool to get point across. Amen. I ain't got to stomp, slam doors, and raise my boys' life. Y'all ain't with me yet. Then you ain't got uh, that, that, that. What kind of Holy Spirit? You, you got you got a different kind of spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit gives you temperance and the fruit of the Spirit. Boldness. I want to tell you something, Joshua. He says in verse one, chapter one, verse six. Look what he said. He tells Joshua. He says, "You listen. You need to read the beginning. You're going into a land that's already occupied by the Hittites and the Ites. Listen to me. Look up at me. I find Joshua one." Every time God gives you an assignment, you're going up against everything that's occupied the territory. Amen. Did you know that every evil thought going to come against you? Every contrary, contradictory, and every critic. Y'all ain't with me yet. And it's way you criticize. But you got this continuum. The mission. Are you ready? Don't be troubled. And don't be fearful. Look what he said. Be strong. I want to ask you a question tonight. Are you strong? In your pursuit 
to do the will of God. The Holy Spirit gives you boldness to perform the will of God. Amen. And courageous. I'm going to tell you something. I'm, 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 I am as fearless and courageous right now, but I'm telling you something. I wished I had it a babe 30 years ago. Can I share something with you? Even when I thought I wasn't a man, I still was moving forward. By the Holy Ghost. Because God's opinion of you don't change. Amen. God sees you as his glory. And God's reputation that's behind you don't change. Amen. He's still God. Yes. He's talking to Joshua. Is that right? Yes. Look what he said. For you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to give their father. He said again, only be strong. And what? Very, Very courageous. I want to ask you tonight. Are you strong? I'm not praying your strength in the Lord. Amen. I'm telling you, get strength. Amen. By the Holy Spirit. You know why I pray in his tongue? Because it builds me up. Amen. It stirs up something. I raise hell. Amen. Let me build up against. Let me stop the possession of. Then he said, the gates of hell will not prevail. It should be fluently. It should be fresh. It should be ready. Oh, you in your life. Only be strong and very courageous. Look what it is. Be careful to do accordingly to all the law with Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it or to the right or to the left. So you let it may be. So that you may have what? Success. Wherever you go. Now stop right there. Highlight those words. I'm talking to you tonight. I'm talking to you that this success, some of y'all have you you have given the success to certain people. I did not, I am not successful because I'm a pastor. When I talked to the people around the table, they said. Uh, are you a teacher? I mean, for real. They, they, they came there to get information. We, we, we didn't need it. We, we, at the table, they came up to me and said, are you a teacher? I said, no, I'm a pastor. They said, where did you ask the church at? See, some of y'all can't say where you go to church because you not you haven't qualified this as a church yet in your mind your heart you know some of y'all can't even qualify your preaching who's your pastor oh, this one this one brother you know, when I talk to other people, they say, oh, he's a mighty man. God is with him. Woo! I'd like to be a part of that church. Amen. Who wouldn't want to be a part of the church where God is? Amen. Listen to me. Only God knows how you do things, but let me share something with you. I had to learn. I'm taking God assignment. You got to ignore others' opinions. Amen. That's what Joshua had to do. Look what he said. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it. Stop right there. That's the problem. Same thing comes Psalm 1. Is that right? Yes. And 
Jeremiah 17. That's the problem. Are you ready for this? You got more coming out of your mouth but not the word. You can talk about everybody else, everything, everything, everything. You know, I find that folk can talk about other folk but never talk about their self. Amen. I had a friend, man. I knew everybody's problem that she knew. Her sisters, brothers, all the friends, but I know I say I didn't talk, I didn't, I'm not talking to you about that to know I never meet them. Amen. But who, who are you? Amen. But then after about six months, they started showing trying to be, I mean, a long time. Because we don't want to talk about ourselves. We, we don't want to, but we know everybody, everybody, everybody else needs to do get it fixed and get it straight. When you meditate on and the, and the words coming out of your mouth, that's all you need. Ever since I've been here tonight, I've been speaking the word. Did you know that the folks don't want to be around you when you speak the word? Amen. That's short list. And did you know the other thing? You won't be going to all the meetings and 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 the, and the parties of life when you meditate in the word. Amen. I don't know what y'all do with your time during the day, but I'm meditating the word day and night. If you watch my life, I go to I, I am on my bed in Bible college. I've been in Bible for 38 years and I still ain't got enough. Amen. You ain't with me yet. I'm forever learning and growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Now, is that boring? No. Oh, am I going to die from studying too much? I'm getting ready to go on my home away from home for the end of the year and meditate and listen to God. And all we're going to do is talk. He talked to me, I talked to him. But you know what? He's been talking to me at home too. Amen. I'm sharing serious with you. If you got an assignment and things that God has put in your life to do, you don't let nothing separate you. from what God has for you. The Holy Spirit gives you boldness. Do you think Joshua needed some boldness? Yes. That's why God said, be courageous. Now watch this. But you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, or then you will make your way prosperous. Success and prosper. Stop right there. Some of y'all need a little bit more ching ching. You think. Now you don't want to look back because he even gave you all the ching ching you ever needed in your life. But what did you do with it? I'm talking to you now. Because he says success and prosperous. If you listen to God, and you meditate and pay him, he, he sees what he holds to be. He does. He knows what he provided. And then you would have success. Again, you have success. Let me share something with you. Maybe you didn't get it right then, but won't you get it right for the rest of your life? You don't understand what I just said. Have I not commanded you again? Verse 9. Be strong and courageous. I think he wanted Joshua to get to the point that you're going to need boldness. Amen. I wanted to bring you a tape tonight and let you listen to it. I got a tape 
what you might call very violent man told me years ago some things I shouldn't be saying and some of these things are current moved up to now things that take place you don't realize and prophesy but he said you're one you're one you're one bold inward I must say that That was a compliment. And then he went back ravingly over what I said. Do not tremble and be dismayed. I'm going to share something with you. Most of the time when I see you, most of y'all are trembling. You don't have no good footing. You don't, I'm going to share, I, when I'm on the way to church tonight, I, 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 the Lord spoke to me. How do you live your Christian life? What are you doing daily to prepare you to be Christian? I just lost you right there. Well, you didn't know you had to do something daily. Amen. Other than come to church and Bible study, baby. But what are you doing? How do you prepare? How do you, God get courage in you? How do God get strength in you? How do you get beyond where you've been? How do you step out in boldness? First of all, you're going to have to harvest. You're going to harness your mind. What are you meditating on day and night? sitting on the oak tree in my yard, mama's yard and the Lord speaking to me and saying you must pour out of you what I poured in work wise day for the night coming when no man can work because my heart was always pursuing the mission of God I want you to understand something. This ain't something you just speak from a place and then say, I got it. Amen. David was anointed king, but he wasn't king while he was running from Saul. He was Amen. being trained. Sometimes you're going to be ostracized and rejected and denied and spoken evil of, but great is your reward. See the way God sees. Don't lose your courage. Don't lose the plan. Amen. Amen? Now before you rush off and dismiss these words as good reading and motivation, but not for my practical everyday life, I'd like to challenge you to simply let it marinate in you. Let it drop into your soul and heart. Suppose you know that whatever you do and whatever you go, that God is with you. Amen. And will give you success. Suppose Amen. you knew that. Many years ago, I was preaching right here. And I think it was year two. And Psalms 1 hit me. And I remember Satan, when I was a little boy, talking to me. You know what Satan told me as a little boy? He showed me that I was going to be doing the things like Jesus, raising the dead and healing the sick. And he said, but you're going to be the Antichrist. Listen to me. like 
like four or five years old. But you know what he was trying to tell me? He was trying to scare me away from my mission. My mission is to raise the dead and heal the sick and open blind eyes and do what Jesus did. Amen. Because God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Y'all ain't never had those kind of revelations, have you? Sometimes God will talk to you and show you, talk to you as a child. I remember my mama talking about when she got saved. The bird spoke to her outside of winter. Did you know my uncle got saved? And he told me the same thing. He said a bird came and whispered to him. God can talk to you any kind of way he want to talk to you. Amen. Get your attention. It's just time. But before you dismiss it, I want you to harvest this tonight. That whatever you do and wherever you go, God is with you. And will give you success. My friend, this is the way that the life in Christ is supposed to be lived. Now I'm getting ready to show you something. The nice message in the title, what? Holy, Ghost, Holy Spirit gives you boldness. Turn to me to Proverbs 10, 24, because, see, it's a 50-50 thing. I'm not chewing any of you out. I'm trying to say this to you. Let your business be the business of the Lord, and you will be of success. Amen. Amen. Look at Proverbs 10, 24. Say it when you get there. Amen. When I saw this, I was walking, and I, and this scripture came to my mind. I was like, my God. And this message came to me. Look what he said, Proverbs 10, 24. But the, what the wicked fears will what? Come upon you. Will come upon you. Some of y'all fear you ain't going to make it. You're, that, let me tell you something. You ain't going to make it. Did you know that instantly you got to, you got to, you got to do something instantly, immediately, or it will overtake you. Yes. Amen. Come in with me, yeah. I was born with rheumatoid arthritis. I remember my mother, my aunt carrying me to UNC Hospital. I couldn't walk. I'd done certain things that they do today, the and I needed it. I thought. So I could have been pain free. But then I got saved and God took those things from me and I'm sitting in a revival one night in a basement of a church and all of a sudden my knee was stiff and I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. And Satan told me, if you don't go back to doing those things that you used to do that you know got rid of this arthritic pain, you're going to have arthritis again. Y'all ain't with me yet. Y'all sit here and you don't Amen. think Satan ain't sitting right beside you. Amen. Talking to you. Every Sunday I preach. Every Thursday I see him. Amen. Put the plugs in your ears. And you go off do everything that you didn't hear, that you heard contrary. Living your life and saying you're blessed. And I see you not prospering and struggling in those things in your life. And I wonder why. Because my Bible tells me you'll be of great success. Amen. And 
and you'll prosper. Well, that night, the evangelist Noble Hayes was on that telescreen. I feel like somebody that I'm talking to out there that's right now, you got arthritis pain. That's how he said it. I said, oh my God. He's talking to me. He said, stand up and receive your healing right now. And I'm sitting there. Satan has told me right then you ain't going to get it. You're going to go back to smoking marijuana. Y'all ain't with me yet. It ain't in no CDC. Amen. It's in the WRD. Amen. I couldn't even, I had so much pain, I could barely get up. I got up out of my seat. I stood up and gave God praise right there in that basement of that church. And God set me free. Yay, she keep I don't know. Y'all talking about be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. You think Satan gives up? Mm -hmm. A few months ago, whatever happened, pain came back in my back and my hip. But you know what? Pain ain't kept me out of church. I went to my doctor. I said, can't you give me a shot? He said, I can't give you a shot because I know where to give it. Mm. It won't shot time. It was word time. Amen. But today, I can do my lunges. Amen. Praise God. Because of the W-O-R-D. Yes. Never miss a walk, never miss a service, never complain, talk about it. I'm talking to you tonight. Wherever you go, I will be with you. Amen. What are you afraid of? What happened? What pain? What have you given in to the enemy that now you're submitted to? Are you listening to me today? Yes. Because what the wicked fears will come upon. Are y'all ready for this? I didn't read the rest of it. Amen. Let's read the rest of it. But the desire of the righteous, of the righteous will be granted. I want to be healed. Amen. I want to be pain free. Amen. I don't want no hip operation. I don't want no back operation. I don't mind giving God the glory to the top of my lungs. Amen. I want you to know this ain't death but a pulpit. Amen. What you desire do you desire? Oh, God. Time for you desire fear. You got a decision to make. Satan is sitting right there talking to you. Every time a decision has got to be made, it can be right in your Bible. Amen. It can be in your bed as a little boy. Knowing you're called in ministry to do great things. He's going to try to scare you. I don't even know what an antichrist is. I went to church that Sunday and asked the Sunday school team, well, they were, and they didn't know either. But they knew that boy knows something. If you don't deal with it, and I'm talking about this Holy Ghost, this person of God that came to live inside of you, that God gave us. He enabled us to walk in the power and the boldness. Amen. But you decide. This little bird talked to you in fear. Most of you give in fear. You ain't giving tithes yet. You think that 500 is a lot. 
You think 800 is a lot. You think 1,000 is a lot. You, you say, oh, well, we gave a lot. God said everything belonged to me, the silver and the gold, cows on a thousand hills. I delight the cheerful girl. When you start calculating and rolling out peas, beans, and mint leaves, you ain't counting on his mercy and his grace that he gives you every day. Amen. He's gracious. Are you with me yet? Before you dismiss this in your mental scope and say, this isn't me, you need to know who the wicked or evil ones are in the eyes of God. See, everybody want to say, let me share something with you. When God knows what you're capable of and you don't do that, that's wicked. Don't tell me that that, that that enemy ain't talking to you right away. He sometimes precedes God. He comes before God comes. Amen. And sometimes he comes after God comes. Amen. He came to Adam after God spoke to Adam and gave him instruction. Amen. Is that right? Yes. Look at Psalm 81 verse 15. Won't you see the things the way God sees them? Those who hate the Lord. Are y'all ready for this? Or are you listening to me? Those who hate the Lord will pretend obedience to Him. It's pretense. I'm talking to you. Really, this is you know this this is bigger than this church. You know that those that stay home still they still held accountable for it. Amen. Just because you didn't hear it tonight, you you it's here, you're hearing it in your life. Look what it said. And their time of punishment will be for what? Yeah. Or you want to be free from being punished? What listen to what I'm saying. When you have been not walking in the boldness, in the mission of God in your life, you're out of line. Amen? You don't know what a smooth ride is. Or a smooth walk. Amen? Amen? What I want you to see right now is Proverbs 28 verse 1. We're in on this one. 